Let's all enjoy some of the fan mail on the wall. Hello. 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 Hi guys, it's Em. Today I'm going to be doing a African land snail care video. And it's going to be featuring, of course, Shrek, who's enjoying a little bath at the back there. Let me bring you forward, Shrek, and come and say hi to everybody. See? He's just marinating in here. Don't worry, I'm not planning on eating him. Some people do eat African land snails, but I'm not gonna eat him. This video has been really highly requested, so I really hope that you enjoy it. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew, and also hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all of my different videos. For the sake of argument, I do understand that snails are hermaphrodites. They have both male and female reproductive organs, but I just like to call Shrek a he. So for the sake of argument, he is a he for today. Did I just assume his gender? And really quickly, I'd like to thank Fran from the Etsy shop Birch, please, for sending me this gorgeous little Shrek snail necklace. It's handmade, it's her own design. Definitely check in my description box below. I'll have a link to her Etsy shop and her Instagram, which is at the Birch Please Studio. Right. African land snails. Now, first of all, as a disclaimer, I should say that African land snails are illegal in several different countries, with the United States being one of them. If you live within the United States, I'm sorry, but because they are invasive in Florida and they have done a lot of damage already, they are illegal. You shall not pass! We just wanted to visit Disney World. Please. No. If people are offering you giant African land snails, don't take them, they are illegal, it could get you in a lot of trouble. Here in the UK, it's okay to keep giant African land snails because if they were to escape, our climate would kill them like that. So there's no way that they could be established here in the UK. So if you are considering a giant African land snail, make sure that you do your research on the local laws, make sure they're not illegal. Legalities aside, they can make wonderful, wonderful pets. The one concern that people always tell me is that they're worried about meningitis. If you handle wild snails, there is a risk that you could contract meningitis because they slide over all kinds of fecal matter, urine, um, rat feces, so you just don't know where those outdoor snails have been. The ones that are bred in captivity, they're much, much cleaner. So if you do plan on handling any snails or you handle snails outside, it's really important to wash your hands very well with soap and water after handling them. When it comes to handling snails, you should try to avoid touching their skin because our hands, when they're not wet, can hurt their special skin. If you're moving your snails quickly so that you can clean their enclosure, just gently pick them up by their shell. If you're picking them up to handle them for a prolonged period of time, Time, I would suggest washing a piece of food such as lettuce so that you can safely hold your snail and ensure that you're not hurting their skin. Just bear in mind that the room temperature may be significantly different to the inside of the enclosure, so don't let your snails get too hot or too cold. He's hiding his eyes right now. Hello, oh there's one eye and where's your other eye? There it is! They can be great to teach kids about responsibility. They're not gonna break the bank with regards to food or veterinary care and they're very easy to look after. Also, the setup costs are quite minimal. So, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need before bringing home your snail is an enclosure. So, let's go take a look at mine. When it comes to enclosures, a lot of the time it really is up to you to decide what kind of style you want. So, over here, this kind of tank, it's sort of like a converted aquarium and I find this works really Really well. So looking at this snail setup, you'll be able to see that it does have a lid and this is really important that you do have a secure lid because they are escape artists and if they can get out, they will. So I'm just going to open this for the moment, but it is a nice secure lid, it's even got the sides so they can't get out the top. You'll see on the side here that I have a heat mat controlled by a thermostat as well as a uh, thermometer so I can tell what's going on inside the tank with the humidity and the temperature. Coming back inside the enclosure, on the inside I have these sensors and these sensors by being placed right here next to the heat source give me an accurate reading on the outside as to the temperature. My African land snails tend to do best at about 27 degrees Celsius. At night time I lower that down to 20 degrees Celsius. When it comes to decor it's really up to you how far you want to go. So on the side here I have a little bit of foliage, this is fake, and I've got some bark here as a different 
texture and they have some food over here in the corner. This food over here is some lettuce which I got from Marks and Spencers and I always take off the external leaves because those are the ones that are most likely to have any pesticides although I'm very careful that I go for organic even though I go for organic I still thoroughly thoroughly wash the lettuce before I put it in the enclosure just so I can remove any pesticides that may have found its way onto the food. Also extremely important you're going to need cuttlefish. Lots and lots of cuttlefish. You can buy cuttlefish from almost any pet store, especially where there are bird seeds, because birds often are given cuttlefish as a source of calcium. With snails, they're constantly having to replenish their calcium source because they like to look after their shell. This snail over here has a very worn shell because Shrek is a rescue snail. He'd been living in a cardboard box with lots of other snails who were abandoned, um, and the other snails had started rasping away on his shell, that's why he's got such a damaged shell. Delilah, on the other hand, has a very nice shell and hers is not damaged at all because she was bred by myself in captivity. So that's why her shell's really nice. Shrek's has managed to, um, to heal. When Shrek first came to me, this was where his old shell was and all this shiny new shell down here has been the last couple of months of regrowth. So Shrek's actually been doing really, really well. I'm just gonna pop him down there. The other really important thing is to have a water dish. Snails should have a water bowl available at all times. Terrestrial or land-dwelling snails can drown if the water is too deep. So if you're worried about drowning your snails, place some clean stones in the water dish to give something for the smaller snails to grip onto. The substrate that I'm using is coconut fiber, which I believe is really the best for snails. And the way that you want to have it is that it's nice and firm when you actually roll it into a ball, but that it also crumbles as well. So you don't want it to be wet. You want it to hold a form if you make it into a ball, but not be solid. You definitely don't want to have wet soil. You'll notice as well that I've got a very generous amount of substrate because snails really enjoy burying themselves. They often do that um, during the daytime and also if they get a bit cold, they'll bury themselves into the soil. If you keep reptiles, you'll be quite used to putting heat mats underneath enclosures, but that's not the case with snails. So let me turn you around. You'll notice the heat mat is on the outside of the enclosure, on the side, and not underneath. The reason why is because if you put a heat mat underneath the enclosure, it can really dry out the substrate, and then you don't get this sort of nice texture that I have going on over here, which is very easy and very cozy for the snails to burrow down into. So if you don't live in a warm environment and you need a heat mat, definitely put a heat mat on the side of the enclosure. You know, you can run it along the back or along the front. Just put it on the outside, not underneath the enclosure. I also definitely recommend a thermostat. I know it's really weird. I know it looks as though it's blinking on the camera. It's really strange to see that, but in, real in reality, the lights are both completely still. So I don't know why it's really flashing like that. That's really weird. If I look over the top of my camera, it just looks like one solid steady light. They're not flashing at all. So don't worry, it's not malfunctioning or anything. This just looks deceptive on camera. Um, so a thermostat is really important because if you're going to use any heat source like the heat mat that I have on the side here, then you want to make sure that it's controlled. Also, thermostats are really important because it will protect your snails from overheating or getting too cold. And this is going to be one of your most important tools when it comes to looking at and that's a squirt bottle. So I quite like to squirt on my snails twice a day. So let me just pop that all inside. I quite like to drench them. There we go. And snails love, love, love to be sprayed. Just make sure, of course, that the water's not too hot and not too cold. So room temperature would be the best. Are you gonna come out and say hi, Shrek? Where's your other eyeball, Shrek? Oh, there's his other eyeball. Hello. And there's Delilah making her way into the foliage. Now it's really up to you if you want to keep your snails singularly or with other snails. So I actually have two different species of land snail in here and the likelihood is that they're not gonna breed together. So just be aware, if you are going to keep snails of the same species together, the likelihood is that they're going to produce a lot of babies. You can end up with between 100 to 600 within your first year, sometimes more if you've got multiple snails. So you wanna be very sure of whether or not you wanna keep them together. Now the positive of keeping snails together 
is they do like to follow each other around the tank. I know that sounds strange to people, but they do tend to enjoy other snails' company. So keeping them together is fantastic fun when you see them zooming all around the inside of their enclosure at night time or early in the morning. And um, Shrek does that as well. He's, he's very lethargic right now, um, but they do all zoom around. So if you do happen to find eggs that you don't want, please, whatever you do, don't put them outside. Don't release any snails, don't put any eggs outside. It's not recommended to do. Um, if you have an aquarium or a fish tank, then fish will very readily take baby snails as well as the eggs. Um, if not, what you can do is you can put them in a, a Tupperware container and put them inside your freezer and keep them there for about two weeks and that will stop the eggs from hatching. I know not everyone would be happy with the ethics of putting snail eggs um, in the freezer, but if you're not happy to do what is necessary to keep your numbers in check, then maybe snails are not for you or maybe you should consider just one snail. That said, um, you do run the risk if you have one shop bought snail that it might have mated at the shop with snails before, so you might still get eggs. When cleaning your tank, use only warm water to clean it. Never use bleach or other cleaning ingredients. Remove any uneaten food every day or it will rot and it will mold very quickly. Sometimes you might even see little arthropods crawling all over your snail and in the soil. If they're small and white, they're probably slug mites. Don't worry, a few of them won't hurt your snail. Just change out the bedding and soak your snails to keep the mites numbers in check. Soaking snails once a week will help to keep them healthy. When soaking your snails, never leave them unattended and make sure that the water isn't too hot or too cold. Giant African land snails can eat a whole load of foods. They're predominantly herbivores so you can give them all kinds of fruit and vegetables. I have to consult my list over here because I can't remember them all off the top of my head in one go and it saves me editing. So some of the foods that Shrek likes to eat are bell pepper, so that's sweet pepper. I think it's also called something else around the world but sweet pepper, bell pepper. Banana, if you're gonna feed banana, they actually prefer banana that's been left out for a day or so, so mushy banana. Lettuce, spring greens, carrot, sweet potato, they love sweet potato. Peas, watercress, cucumber, those are just some of the foods which are good for them. Oh, and apple. Of course, with any food that you feed your snail, make sure that you wash it thoroughly first because you don't know if it might have been exposed to any pesticides or any kind of contamination. Even though I know I buy organic, I still make sure that I take off the first couple of leaves around a lettuce because those ones are the most likely to have contamination. So giving them mostly the inside leaves I eat the outside ones because hey, who cares if I get contaminated as long as Shrek's okay. <laughs> Rather than a traditional mouth, mollusks have a tongue-like area under their head called a radula. The radula has tiny teeth-like ridges which the snail will use to scrape against food. It feels a bit like a mini cat tongue. If you feed your snails when it's very quiet, you'll even hear the rasping of the radula against the food. Listen here as Delilah scrapes away at some cuttlefish. Try to stay away from citrus because they don't seem to like citrus at all. So nothing like orange or grapefruit, they're not going to enjoy those. Also they do not like onion, so please, as with a lot of animals, no onion for these guys. They won't thank you for it, it, it could really damage their skin. Please don't feed anything grilled or fried, it's not good for them, and absolutely nothing processed, so no chocolate bars for your snails. If you do have chocolate, just send it to my PO box instead. <laughs> That's it for now. I hope that you enjoyed this care video and that some of you found it either entertaining or informative and that it helps you with your snails um, if you keep them yourself. So please let me know down below if you found it useful um, or if there's anything else that you'd like to know. I'll try and get back to every comment as much as possible. And Shrek is going somewhere down my finger. There he is. As ever, remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, along with the notification bell, and come and follow me on my other social media. Come find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, but Twitter is the place I'm really enjoying right now. So come find me over on Twitter, at MZoticOfficial. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Take care, bye. Slimy kisses for everyone. Mm -mm.